look into it, and we saw some good, some bad from Aaron Rodgers. We saw, you know, him excel in the three-step game. He excelled in the in the movement of the pocket with the naked bootlegs and things like that. Where I saw Aaron Rodgers struggle was down the field with his accuracy, not accurate pushing the ball down the field. That could be a problem for Aaron Rodgers as the season goes along. Well, last night, Packers head coach Mike McCarthy struck a familiar chord, saying, "I saw Aaron just like he is every day." Once again. McCarthy trying to manage expectations and maybe even the pressure. How difficult will that job get if Rodgers starts to struggle? Well, it's definitely going to be a hard job if Aaron Rodgers starts to struggle. Mike McCarthy is very aware of the pressure that Aaron Rodgers is under, and he understands that the magnitude of following somebody like Brett Favre. I think that he will try to put Aaron in situations where Aaron will succeed, doing the things that he knows Aaron will succeed at because he's been around him for three years. He knows that he'll do well in the three-step game. He'll do well moving the pocket. We'll see him focus on that stuff throughout the season. All right, Tim Hasselbeck, thanks so much for joining us and your insight. Up next, the small market resurgence continues in Major League Baseball, but will it last? The Minnesota Twins take first place for the win last night over the Yankees. And in Tampa Bay, another setback. And the Rays hang on down the stretch with another injured star. Players look at this game for justification. Man, I should be this, I should be that. And as for kids, my kids kick my butt, man. Because they're on the line. I can't even compete with them. And in our centerpiece, midnight mark, a video game milestone. As Madden NFL turned 20. So our poll asks you, what is John Madden best known for? Coaching, broadcasting, or video games? Your results coming up a bit later. And you can log on to our interactive page, vote in our poll, send us an email, and sign up for our daily program alert. Our poll results, as I said, coming up later in the show. Now remember, Dad, you can take a picture Crop it and post it to the web, all right? And, and mom, it's called a Bluetooth headset. It's built right in, okay? And if you have any trouble at all, call us, you know, or text. Bye. Bye. I'm so proud of them. Get your family ready for back to school with the network. Get cool LG exclusives like the Voyager for just $99.99, our lowest price ever, from America's most reliable network, Verizon Wireless. I have high blood pressure. And I was surprised to learn that it may have led to my erectile dysfunction. That's what my doctor told me about Levitra. Certain medical conditions, including high blood pressure, diabetes, and high cholesterol, can decrease blood flow, which may lead to ED. That was news to me. And my doctor told me Levitra could help. Levitra works by increasing blood flow and help treat ED. Levitra works for me. Maybe it can work for you. Ask your doctor if you're healthy enough for sexual activity. If you have heart problems or an alpha blocker therapy or have uncontrolled high blood pressure, talk to your doctor before taking Levitra. Do not take Levitra if you take nitrates or chest pains, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects may include headache, flushing, and stuffy or runny nose. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help if you experience an election lasting longer than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss of vision or hearing, stop taking Levitra and call your doctor right away. Ask your doctor if Levitra is right for you. Follow your fantasy Hall of Famers on game day with ESPN's Fantasy Cast. It's interactive live sport with real-time updates and red zone alerts. ESPN Fantasy Football, the best experts, the best features, the best game. All for free at ESPN.com. The 2008 World Series of Poker continues tonight on ESPN with all new episodes at 8 and 9 Eastern. Outside the lines at this hour, and that more bad news for the surprising Tampa Bay Rays as rookie third baseman Evan Longoria suffers a broken wrist last night and joins Carl Crawford on the disabled list, making the Rays stretch drive all that much tougher. For more now on the impact of that injury, we bring in Sports Illustrated baseball writer Gennaro Felice. Gennaro, first off, how do the Rays keep winning through all of these injuries? Well, you know, John, the Rays keep winning because the strength of this team all season long has been the starting pitching and the bullpen, for that matter. The pitching has really been the core of this Rays team, not the offensive side. They, they haven't been putting up, you know, seven, seven, eight runs a game. They've been getting great starting pitching from Kazmir through Sonnenstein and the bullpen with guys like Ball Four 
and J.P. Howell and Percival at the end when he's been healthy has been solid. So it's not as though this team has been, you know, putting up tens of runs. It's, it's been the pitching. So when a guy like Evan Longoria goes down and Carl Crawford as well, it hurts. But it's not really taking away a whole lot from their, obviously, the pitching side and their team as a whole. Now, it should be noted that on top of this pitching, the other strength has been the fielding. They've been one of the better fielding teams in Major League Baseball all season long. And when you're losing, Carl Crawford is one of the premier left fielders fielding wise in baseball. And Evan Longoria might, might very well be the best third baseman in the American League, maybe in baseball right now, defensively. So that hurts. Janeiro, moving on to the Twins, with their win over the disappointing Yankees last night, Minnesota now has a half game lead in the American League Central. How have the Twins managed to overcome the loss of key players like Johan Santana and Torrey Hunt? Well, I think one name needs to be brought up that really doesn't get his due, and that's Rick Anderson, the Twins pitching coach. You constantly hear about Dave Duncan and a few other pitching coaches around the league, but Rick Anderson has been there since 2002, and pretty much every year he just churns out starting pitching, it seems from an outsider's perspective, from nowhere. And this year is no different. They have five young starting pitchers, and that now they have gotten rid of Levon Hernandez and subbed in Lariano, and these guys are going out there and giving them a chance to win every night. They've also had a, a big upsurge on the offensive side from Denard Span, who has been one of my favorite players in the last few months to watch, just a ball of energy. Uh, ESPN web gems, it seems like, every other night, and then offensively, he's a real pest up there. So you put him in front of, you know, Morneau and Maurer, and they have a bunch of other scrappy guys, as Minnesota usually does, and this team can do some damage. All right, General, we'll see how it plays out for the rest of the season. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Trav. Up next in our centerpiece, and at least one for one of the most of the Red Farm remains a Packer. Well, I'm tired. Everyone was gone with force and Packer, which was true. So, that was a little bit, but I'll probably be making a good